thankful for Harry and that message that he brought to us this morning at 10 o'clock. If, uh, if you weren't able to join, if you weren't able to, to see it, you can uh, go on to our Facebook page, 84th Street Church of Christ, and uh, you'll be able to, to view it from there. Also from our website, from 84thchurch.com, or from uh, our YouTube uh, channel uh, that we have. There, there's various means and methods that... Uh, they were able to do these recordings and get them out there, and we're so thankful and grateful for that. Uh, as Ronnie said whenever he addressed the congregation, so thankful and grateful, especially for Randy and all the work that he's done behind the scenes to be able, be able to, to do this and, uh, and, and put these things together. Um, for this morning and, and, and for this hour, for this lesson, what I'd like to talk about is this idea of opportunities. You know, there. There, we, we see it in Scripture, this idea that there are these opportunities that are present and that are out there. And to do that, I'd like to read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Whenever we look there in the book of Ephesians, Paul's gotten to the point where he's gone through and he's been discussing and describing the, the great blessing that is there in Christ and, 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 and what a benefit and what a blessing it is and how thankful we are to be. He's then transitioning and and talking about, because of this great blessing, that there's a certain way that we should be living our lives. We should no longer be walking in darkness. We should no longer be walking in the ways of the old man. But we should now be walking in the light. We should now be walking uh, in in, in a way of the Lord because of this great blessing that is in Christ. And he gets here into uh, verses 15 and 16. And I want to notice something in these two, whenever he's talking about how we should be walking and how we should be living our life. He says in verse, starting in verse 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Notice he talks about, and he starts off telling us that, hey, because of this great blessing in Christ, no longer walk as fools. Don't walk in that way. Walk circumspectly. Walk carefully, as some translations put it. And be wise when you walk. And the way in which we do that, as he gets into it, he talks about redeeming the time. And I want to look at that idea of redeeming the time. You know, whenever we see that word redeem or redeeming, a lot of times our minds immediately and and first go to the redemption in Christ. And that's exactly right. The fact that we were once slaves, the fact that we were once separated, but we have that blessing that is in Christ and that that purchase price of the blood of Christ, and therefore we have the opportunity to be redeemed. We have that opportunity to be made in a right relationship with him. And that's oftentimes where our mind initially goes to when we think of that word redeem, because it's there throughout Scripture and in that light. But whenever we look at it here in in this aspect, what I want to notice is, is what this idea that Paul is getting across and what we see from the original language. Strong says that that word redeeming that's translated there means to buy up and that's certainly true but vines gives us a little bit deeper of an analysis of it which is really going to bring in uh, this idea of opportunities that we have and what paul's trying to say vines tells us that it means of buying up which is what strong says but buying up the opportunity i.e making the most of every opportunity turning each to the best advantage since none can be recalled if missed. And so what we see here is this idea of the redeeming of buying up the opportunities. And that's what we eventually get into when we go, uh, whenever you look at the word time there, it is translated time, but it's not necessarily meaning chronological time as we think of it as minutes and hours and all those types of things. But more accurately, I believe it should, uh, it, it can be translated as opportunity. And that's the idea that's being brought out there. And so whenever we look at it, this idea is don't be fools, walk circumspectly, walk carefully, and redeem those opportunities, buy up those opportunities. In other words, opportunities are going to come about. Every moment of every day, we have opportunities. He's not talking about going back and trying to buy back opportunities in the past. We can't do that, and that's what Vines points out to us. He points out the fact that it's turning each to the best advantage since none can be recalled if missed. It's not, hey, I missed that opportunity. I'm going to go back and and try to buy it back. The idea that we get here is you walk wise. You walk circumspectly, not as fool, but as wise, 
understanding and seeing that each moment that we have, there is an opportunity available for us. And that we take advantage of those opportunities and that we do not let them slip away. You know, in our culture, in our society, one might think of it as the idea of the saying, making the most of your opportunities. These opportunities are presented to us on a daily basis. Every day that we go through, there are opportunities for us. And in this context, opportunities to make sure that we're walking the way that we ought to, opportunities that we're living for God, not for ourselves. Those opportunities are always there. And whenever we're walking in, in, in a way of wisdom, when we're walking wise, we're walking in a way as to try to see those opportunities are present and to not let them pass. Making the most of those opportunities as they come up. You know, with this idea, I want to really take this lesson and, and, and think of it in two different aspects. Because as we think of this uh, situation that we are in with COVID-19, as we think of the situation that we are in with these stay-at-home orders and what is going on, there are opportunities that we're going to look at in the second part or the second point going on right now, and Ronnie brought that up. But there are also, what I want us to do is understand and recognize we have these opportunities that happen, and sometimes we take them for granted. And that's kind of what I want to look at first, opportunities that as we walk in our life, there's always opportunities available for us to draw near to God, that, that, that we are to buy up, to make the most of them, yet we oftentimes take them for granted. And it's really apparent during this time right now, whenever we are going through what we're going through with the stay-at-home orders, with, with, the, with, with the virus and, and uh, the damage that it does to one's health. The areas I first want to look at is this idea of being with and seeing brethren. That is an opportunity that I know personally I have taken for granted in the past. And in this one, I'm not necessarily just talking about in the worship service and assembly. We'll get to that in a moment. But just being with and seeing brethren on a daily basis, being able to go over to their homes, to be hospitable, to have them into our homes, and to visit with one another, to be with one another. To, to, to talk with one another and to care with one another. You know, Paul maybe puts it a way that all of us are uh, thinking at this point in time. Whenever you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 17, Paul says here, But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in, in presence, not in heart, endeavor more eagerly to see your face with great desire. You know, this was a group that Paul had recently worked with, had, had, had on his journeys gone through and worked with and converted. And as you see throughout this, the, this first letter uh, to the Thessalonians, he cares so deeply about it. He cares about their souls. That's why he sends those over to them to make sure that they're doing okay, that, 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 that they are doing okay and that Satan hasn't come after them. And he, and he goes on throughout this letter encouraging them to keep on keeping on in, in, in the fact that he's praying for them, that they are praying for them. But whenever we see here in verse 17, this is the idea or the thought in, in what many of us be going through at this time, I know I have, this desire to see your face, this desire to be with you. And it makes you think back before this, and how we might have taken those opportunities that we've had for granted, not inviting people over to our homes, being hospitable in order to see them. Not taking people up whenever they've invited us over to their home to hang out with them, to get to, to visit with them, to talk with them. Those opportunities, whenever we get into a moment like this, we recognize and realize how blessed of an opportunity that is. And yet whenever life just was going on as normal prior to the, the shutdowns and this virus coming about, we took those for granted, at least I know, like I said, I did. Taking for granted that ability and that opportunity to be with you, to be with one another, to see each other face to face, to be able to talk to one another, to, to, to find out what's going on in one another's lives. For me, being new here at, at 84th Street, to get to know y'all for the first time, those are opportunities that whenever we look in the past, we have taken for granted, Paul 
says uh, similar, similarly whenever he's uh, to, uh, writing to the brethren at Philippi in uh, chapter 1, verse 8, given this idea that, that he longs to see them. He says in verse 8, For God is my witness. How greatly I long for you all with the affection of Christ. He longs for them. God is his witness. God is witnessing that, uh, is, is his witness to, to how much he longs for them, how much he cares for them and misses them. And you know, the point that we're trying to bring out is understand that those opportunities are there, and they were there. They, 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 had, they had been there. And whenever we get to a situation like this, we recognize and realize how precious they are. And we're not laying this out there to say, you know, to, to, to make anybody feel bad or feel sorry for themselves for missing opportunities in the past. What it's simply to do is to make us understand and to make us realize that those opportunities that are blessings from God were there, seeing brethren. And whenever we get on the other side of this, and we don't know when it's going to be, Lord willing, whenever we get on the other side of this, to not take those opportunities for granted again. The opportunity to not only meet with those in their homes, but maybe go into the hospital and seeing those who are sick and ill, seeing those who are in need of that encouragement and that source. And I'm telling you, whenever you go and do that, whenever you go and meet with them, those who are sick and shut in, those who are elderly, the source of encouragement you get after talking with them and the perspective that you now have, being with and seeing brethren is such a, such a huge blessing, and we really recognize it during this time whenever we're shut into our own homes, whenever we have these stay-at-home orders and we can't just go see whoever we want to see and go do, what, uh, go do whatever it is we want to do. Those opportunities are taken for granted and we don't want to. Understand that and recognize that and realize that. I'll tell you what, another opportunity that we often would take for granted and we really recognize it during this time, it's that opportunity to gather, to meet with one another and to worship as an assembly. And we see that idea there in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. In Hebrews chapter 10, Verses 24 through 25, we read, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day coming. You know, when we forsake the assembly, we miss the opportunity to be stirred up and moved to good works. Not only that, but we miss that opportunity when we're considering one another to, another to stir them up and move them to good works. The ability, the opportunity that, that is there that, that's present whenever we meet with one another, and we miss that so much, especially during this time. During this time, we recognize and realize how big of a blessing it is to meet with one another, to worship together in an assembly so thankful and grateful for it, especially whenever we are in this time and we're not able to do it given the present uh, distress, given the present situation. You know, he, he might not like the fact that I'm going to bring this up, but I gave him a hard time before Harry got up here. But, you know, Ronnie, yesterday he woke up, forgot what day it was, and uh, got dressed and was ready to come to worship service yesterday. And whenever I initially got that, of course, I laughed and, and thought it was hilarious, as most people uh, probably did. But what I quickly started to realize, what, 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 what quickly started to set in was how much I miss coming through the door and seeing Ronnie there greeting me every time that we meet. What I miss is, or what, what I started to recognize is how much I miss seeing not only Ronnie, but everybody in the congregation. And the love, the care, the concern, the compassion that this church, that this congregation has for everyone. So thankful and grateful for it. And I realize now, going through this time and not being able to, to, to do that the last few Sundays, how much I have taken that opportunity for granted. And again, it's not that I can go, buy, go back and go buy back that opportun those opportunities. As we move forward, we understand and we realize and we recognize to walk circumspectly, walk carefully, be wise, understanding that there are those opportunities that are there 
that are sources that stir one another up to good works, that are sources that help us as we meet. And what a blessing that is. We're so thankful and so grateful for that. I'll tell you another opportunity that we might have taken for granted as we think about this time is the opportunity to spread the gospel. And we'll talk as we get into the next part, the fact that there are currently opportunities to spread the gospel. But how much have we taken that for granted? You know, we look at um, Acts chapter 8, verse 4. This is after the death of Stephen, after he was killed. And we get into this chapter and we uh, quickly realize and recognize that there was a great persecution that rose against the church. And that because of that, the, 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 the Christians, that they went everywhere, that they scattered. But what we see there in verse 4 is, the, uh, therefore, those who scattered, what they did is they went everywhere preaching the word. You know what's implied here? What's implied here is wherever they went, there were opportunities for them to preach the word. And they recognize that. Because it, it doesn't say that they went everywhere and, and, and they could have preached the word. There were opportunities, but they didn't. They went everywhere preaching the word. They did it. They went out and they preached the word of God. And there were those opportunities everywhere that they went. And I speak about it in this light under this heading of opportunities taken for granted. Because how many of us, whenever we go through our daily lives before COVID-19 and all the people that we are around, the people from work, the people uh, that uh, we ran into through the various activities and stuff that we're involved in or that our kids are involved in, all those opportunities that were a present, that, that were present wherever we went to be able to discuss God's word to them, to teach and to preach that good news, that good message, yet we didn't do it. So many times you get into, and I know that I've been there taking my kid to a ball practice, and you might be going down that path of having some conversation where a spiritual matter can be brought up, and you in your mind just say, you know what? I, not not today. I'll see them next practice on Tuesday. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them about, about it then. We take those opportunities for granted, thinking that there is going to be another day. You know, that's one of the things that, that we read about in, uh, in uh, uh, 1 Peter 3. Or uh, is it 1 Peter or 2 Peter? 2 Peter 3. Whenever, 2 Peter 3, verses 9 and 10, whenever he's talking about the fact that... Um, you know, of that day and that hour, we don't know. We don't know when Christ is going to return. Prior to that, he talks about the fact that the Lord is long-suffering. So, yes, the Lord is long-suffering, but he's long-suffering in the fact that he's given you that moment right then and there. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We don't know if we're still going to be here. We don't know if our life is going to end, and we don't know when the Lord is going to return. But he's long-suffering in the fact that he has given us that moment. How many of us have taken... Uh, that moment for granted whenever it comes to spreading God's word. I know that I have. Whenever we look here in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, we see that these weren't people who took it for granted. They, whenever they went, they went everywhere preaching. They took those opportunities to preach God's word. I would just want us to consider those things, to think about the opportunities that we might have taken for granted and understand that there are, those opportunities were there and Lord willing, They'll be there again, and if they are, to not take them for granted. But in that same light, what I want us to recognize is given this present situation, this, th th this present distress, is that there are opportunities right now to be able to grow ourselves or opportunities right now that we can take advantage of. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we read that there's a time and a season for everything. And that idea there is, is that Everything has its time and its season. There are opportunities to do all these various types of things. And one of the things that I want us to recognize and realize is that although this is not ideal, there are opportunities that are present that we want to take advantage of. You know, for many during this time, they have a whole lot more personal time than they, ever, than, than they really probably ever had. I think for me in my life, in my situation, my kids are no longer, uh, their, their, their sports are shut down, their activities are shut down. Uh, we're, we're not running them around to different birthday parties or anything like that. Anything that I would maybe want to go do, I can't go do right now because those activities might be shut down. 
So there is more personal time. Let's take advantage of that. Understand and recognize that there is an opportunity there to do something with. There's an opportunity that we have more time on our hands to pray. You know, we see in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, that Jesus understood the importance of prayer. He says, now, uh, the, the scripture says, Now in the morning, having risen lo- a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary pl- place, and there he prayed. The recognition from Jesus of the importance of prayer and the fact that he took time to do that, he rose early in the morning to make sure that it was done. And again, I know I talked about this if you watched any of the Facebook Lives that I did earlier in the week. I know I talked about this scripture and, and brought it out, but I think the point is so powerful. Jesus, the one who is the Son of God, the one who was in the beginning, was with God, was God. He came down to this earth. He became flesh. He dwelt among us, God dwelling among us. That individual understood, even though he had the abilities that he had, the powers that he had, he understood the importance and the power of prayer, and he took the time to do it. You know, a lot of times we get going through our life, and, 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 and we might, uh, well, a lot of times it just happens where we don't uh, take the time to pray. We just get too busy in our life. Things get going, and, 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 and one thing leads to another, this task to that task, and we just end up not praying like we should. Jesus gives us the importance and shows us the importance of prayer. Daniel shows us the importance of it in Daniel 6, verse 10. And not only the importance, but how this is to be something that is done with regularity. Daniel, in, in, in the account of Daniel in the lion's den, whenever uh, you, you have those uh, who uh, came to the king, and whenever they came to him, the, the, the different governors and satraps, whenever they came to him, they knew that there was only one way in which they were going to be able to catch Daniel into a situation where they could... Uh, harm him, where they could try to remove him and get him out of that, and get him out of the way. And the only way was if they find something against his God. So they had to come up with a prayer, or, or, or with, with, with a law that would be signed into place. It couldn't be changed by the by Medo Persian rule. And so he understood that they, they understood that if we do this, that Daniel isn't going to not do this, and he's not going to not pray. And that's exactly what we see. Even though this law was put into place, that Whoever bows down to and, and, and prays uh, to, to any other God, to any other individual outside of the king is going to be thrown on the lines. And we read in verse 10 that that didn't phase Daniel. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with the windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. Pay attention here, as was his custom since his early, since his early days. You know, Daniel, what he recognized was the importance of prayer, but not only that, the regularity of it. And this was something that was a custom that he put in, or that, that, that he did. This wasn't something that he just all of a sudden started to do. This was something that he had been doing for a long time. And what I want us to recognize and realize during this present situation and the opportunities that we might have. Now we have more time, more time to start to develop this prayer life that we see throughout Jesus' life was so, so much of an integral part to who he was and him giving his will over to God's will. So much of who Jesus was, so much of who Paul was, we see throughout his writings. How many times we see him writing down the fact that he is praying for those that he is writing to throughout Daniel's life and others. Use this opportunity to start to develop those habits right now, to pray to God on a daily basis, and not just offering up a, 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 a meaningless prayer, but pouring your heart out to God, getting down on your knees and coming before Him. You know, the idea that we see there in 1 Thessalonians, whenever we read uh, praying without ceasing, isn't the fact that we are just always in a constant state of prayer, but it is a continuous thing. We are always doing it. We are always going to God in prayer. We're always going in that direction. Whenever we go through our normal life the way that it was prior to this situation that we are currently in, we had opportunities to pray. 
There's always, oppor- always opportunities to stop what we're doing and to pray and to pray. But what happened is we got going through our life and, and it just we it ends up slipping our mind. And that is wrong. That is not something that is OK. But understand that we right now have an opportunity to start to pray to God the way that we should take advantage of that opportunity because it's here for you and develop and create that habit. So afterwards, Lord willing, when things get back to normal, you're praying to God in the manner and in the means and the way that you should. What about the more, more time to study? You know, similar to prayer, we get going through our life, and there were, have always been opportunities to, to stop what we're doing and to study God's word to make time for it, but we hadn't. Now we have that time. Take advantage of that opportunity and set those habits in order and understand the importance of study. Just like there's an importance on prayer, it's not an optional thing. Hey, you can do it if you want to. It's something that we must do. We must study, and let's look at why. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, we read, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. This is Paul writing to Timothy, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Dividing the word of truth. The way that we rightly divide the word of truth is through study. The way that we come to an understanding of what God's word says is by studying God's word. This is what allows us to handle God's word correctly and not incorrectly. To handle it in the way that God wants it, desires it, and requires it to be handled. It's through the study of his word. It's through that understanding and that spending time in it. Now we have time to do it. Make sure that you're taking advantage of that. You know, I also want to point out a little bit later there in in chapter 3 in the same letter that Paul wrote. In 2 Timothy 3, verses 13 through 15, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned been assured of, knowing from, the, uh, knowing from who you have learned them. Verse 15, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Pay attention, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. What is able to make us wise unto salvation? That would be the Holy Scriptures. That would be that message, the Word of God that we are to study. That's what's going to make us wise unto salvation. That was partly of what Harry was talking about this morning. Not some feeling that comes about me, not, 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 not that idea that, 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 uh, that, 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 that I, I have this feeling, but it is through God's word that I become wise unto salvation. That's how I become wise for salvation, through that holy scripture. He then continues there and goes into a verse that, that, that many are familiar with there, verses 16 and 17, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, th- uh, may be, uh, complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Understand how we get there is through Scripture. What makes us wise unto salvation is through Scripture. That's where we need to turn to. And right now we have that opportunity presented to us in the fact that a lot of the things that we had planned, a lot of the things that would normally get in the way are no longer there. And, you know, a lot of times when we think about it, that makes us sad, and it does. I mean, I'm not able to see my family like I used to be able to. I'm not able to see my friends like I used to be able to. I'm not able to go places with my kids like I used to be able to. Take them to a ball game or to a sporting event. Some of those things that we enjoy doing so much, yes, we might not be able to do them, but understand the opportunity that is present before us. Because of that, we now have time that we can take advantage of. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of that opportunity that's right before you to read God's Word so that you're more ready to be able to handle it correctly. Read God's Word that is going to make you wise for salvation. Read that Word. It's going to draw you nearer to God push you further away. I'll tell you another opportunity that is presently there given this present situation in distress is the opportunity to improve our families. 
looking within our families and improving the situation that is there. What about your marriage? There's an opportunity present and available right now to strengthen your marriage. You know, we read in Genesis 2, verse 24, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The two are to be one flesh and are joined together. We have this opportunity right now to be able to focus on our marriage. A lot of times we get going through this life. And what ends up happening is all the different distractions get in the way, and especially whenever you have kids and they're all doing their different things, that that marriage, that focus on each other is not there. You have your job. uh, She might have her job or he might have his job or they might be doing this task. He might be doing this task. Might be taking kids different places. What often ends up happening is that marriage doesn't have the opportunity to... uh, to draw near to one another. In fact, what they end up starting to do is they end up starting to work further and further apart. What you have right now is an opportunity where those things aren't going on, to be able to focus on one another, to be able to study with one another, to draw near together as you draw nearer to God. It's the idea that we see there. You know, this unity that is here is a unity that is established by God. It's it's God-ordained. And it's one that man is not to separate, as we see in Matthew 19, verse 6. We're not to separate what God has joined together. And in fact, a little bit later, he says there's only one reason for the separation. There should be only one reason for divorce. That's what Jesus says. There is only one one reason, and that's for, uh, for adultery. There should be no other reason for divorce that occurs. But yet, that's what we see in our society, unfortunately. There's a divorce rate going through the roof. Use this opportunity to strengthen your marriage. It's there. And again, all these opportunities that I'm talking about, just because we're going through this time doesn't mean we have to go through something like this to strengthen our families and our marriage and to read and to study and and to pray. But what I want us to do is understand that in the face and in the light of this, so often what happens, all we see is the trouble, all we see is the mess, the issues. What we need to do is sift through that and see, hey, you know what? I can use this for good in this sense and strengthen our marriages, which is something our culture, our society, our communities, our country, and our churches so desperately need as good, strong, healthy marriages. Those marriages that can be examples to all the young and all the youth that are coming up and growing up within that congregation. We need those. Examples that people can look to and say that I want that marriage that's founded on God, the unity that is there. Another thing that we could do with our family is, is utilize this time to teach our children. Use this time to teach our children God's word. You know, we read in Ephesians chapter four or six, verse four, and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. That idea and that word there for training, it encompasses many different things. It's not just one or the other, but that idea, that Greek word there uh, encompasses the idea of instruction, of discipline, and correction. And so we utilize this opportunity to do, as we see in Proverbs twenty-two fifteen, to discipline our children, to have that focus and that strong uh, that, 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 that strong focus that I'm not going to let my kids get away with things that I otherwise would have. You know, that's what happens again. We get going through life and we're so busy and, and all those types of things that our kids do something and we don't uh, correct them in the way that we should. We don't discipline them in the way that we should. And a lot of times it's because we're too tired to. You can't be doing that. Whenever you do that, that is going to that, that lend the child to be heading down the path of destruction. You need to discipline him. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to instruct them. That that word training there also encompasses the idea of instruction and instructing them in the word of God. That's what we see there in Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 9. In Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 9, we read, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, 
You shall bind them as a sign on your heart, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. The idea that we have here, and whenever he's going through that, is this. There shouldn't be an opportunity or, or a time that we don't teach our children God's word. Everywhere that we go, everything that we do, there's opportunities, and we should be taking advantage of them to teach God's word. And again, I know I keep going back to this point, but normally whenever we're not in this situation, that gets thrown out the door because we're so busy with our life. There's an opportunity right now to start that habit, to start teaching your children God's word, to have those Bible studies at night. I'm reminded of Todd and Kristen Thielbar at Southside in Kansas City, a couple that uh, whenever I first became a Christian and started attending there, they, uh, they were so encouraging to me. And as they started to have kids, and I worked with Todd for a period of time uh, in, in, in my job, talking with them and seeing and being so encouraged and edified about how they are having Bible studies with their children every night. And the opportunities when they're out and about taking those opportunities to teach their kids God's word. We need to take those opportunities. We need to see that those opportunities are there. And right now, there's an abundance of opportunities, especially when you look at it just from a pure time factor and time standpoint, to be able to start teaching God's word, to do Bible studies. But once we get past this, Lord willing, again, once we get past this situation, understand that it doesn't just stop, hey, only during this time do I teach my children God's word. No, whenever you're out and about and in the community, whenever we're able to get back to that point and you see different moments, teach them. When they ask you questions, don't just say, well, because I said so. Point them to the word of God and show them from scripture. This is why we do what we do and why we don't do whatever it is that they're asking that we don't do. Point to scripture. We use this opportunity whenever we, we have it. Start those habits right now. Start training up our children in the Lord as we should. You know, something else that we take an opportunity to do right now, we take the opportunity to spread the gospel. I know I talked earlier about opportunities in the past that we might have neglected, that, that, that we might have taken for granted that are going by, but I want to tell you there are opportunities right now, even though we are uh, shut in and we're not able to, to travel and be around all the people that we once were, there are opportunities right now to teach God's word. You look in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 17 and we see Paul there in Athens taking advantage of a situation in order to be able to teach God's word. And it was a situation that most of us would look and recognize as why is he trying to teach these people? But in Acts chapter 17 as he's there in Athens and he's among these people, we read in verse 16 that, that Paul's spear was provoked whenever he saw idolatry, whenever Paul saw that there was massive amounts of idolatry in the city, he understood and it moved him and he recognized God's word needs to be taught to these people. And so he started teaching them and he reasoned with them in the synagogues. He reasoned with the Jews in the synagogues and the Gentiles as well, as well in the marketplace. And then there were those that heard him and they took him up to the Areopagus. And whenever he was taken up to the Areopagus, this is a place where there were uh, many people who were uh, wise within the Greek way of life, within the philosophers. They were people who were thinkers, if you will. They were studied in that way. And we read there in verse 21, for all, whenever Paul was taken up there, for all the Athenians and foreigners who were there, there being in the Areopagus where Paul was sent, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. And what I want to pull out from this is understanding that there was an opportunity there in Athens. Again, a lot of us would see, how is there an opportunity? These are just people who are full of idolatry. There's no way that they're going to hear God's word. There's no way that they're going to hear God's message. There's no way that, that, that and even if they start hearing it, they're definitely not going to be obedient to it. They're not going to go down that path. But Paul saw that there was an opportunity there. And he saw that there was an opportunity because as we see here in verse 21, these were people that wanted to either tell or hear something new. These were people that were interested in different things that would be taught, something that would be new to them. And so what did he do? He took advantage of that opportunity. And as we read throughout the rest of that uh, account there in the book of Acts, 
Paul recognized and realized and starting with the fact that they had this, uh, the, the, this idol, the, the, this uh, statue of the unknown God. And he started from there and he said, that's who I want to talk to you about. And we recognize and realize that whenever Paul took advantage of that opportunity, that there were those who heard. There were those who believed. See, what we're trying to lay out here is even in this time, we might not think that there's an opportunity. I'm not around people. I can't talk to them. Uh, what am I going to do to be able to spread God's word? People are just real stressed and they're wor- real worried about losing their job and, and, and taking care of their families and, and, and all those types of things anyways. Understand that there is an opportunity right now. I want to tell you the amount of views on different things that are posted on social media with spiritual matters. is I, I never thought that it would be that high. And it's crazy how many people are turning to those means in this time, but then whenever you think about it, it makes perfect sense. People have been putting their hope in the things of this life and the things of this world, and just like that, they were taken away. Businesses and jobs that you once had are now shut down and closed. And people are starting to develop a mindset that, you know what, maybe we need to turn to God. Maybe we, we may, I, I want to hear what this is all about from Scripture. I want, who is God? Who is Jesus? People are turning that way. I'm telling you, there are opportunities right now, given this present situation, to be able to teach God's word. And those opportunities have always been there, but there are so many people that are turning in that direction right now, recognizing that just as we read throughout Scripture, this life is futile and, and, and uh, th- that, there's, uh, that you cannot put your hope in it, that everything's eventually going to be burned up. There are people out there who are not Christians that are recognizing that and that are trying to now find and work their way, navigate through this situation just like we are. There are opportunities to spread God's word. One might ask, well, how do I do that? I can't meet with them. If you have a social media, share it. If you have social media, share various sermons that are being preached and posted. They are all over the place at this point in time. Share scripture and share different articles that are being out there maybe uh you know somebody who doesn't have social media go out there and go find different things come ask harry and i we'll give you guys various areas where you can you can do that i'll tell you something else you can do with today's modern technology is have facetime bible studies either with a phone or 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 if, or if you have some sort of portal or something like that that's something that my family has been able to do and it has been such a blessing and, and such an encouragement to be able to have a study twice a week that we are with my wife's parents. Just so we can see them, they can see us, and we can encourage and edify one another. Those opportunities are there. We might look in this situation and go start going down the path in our mind and our human wisdom that there is just absolutely nothing good that can come from this. I'm telling you, there is. And you've got to see through that mess. You've got to see through all the issues that are there. See through the uncertainty that is there and see the possible opportunities that are there and take full advantage of them because they are there. They are there. i tell you what, another thing that this whole situation has allowed us to do is it's giving us the opportunity in our present situation to reflect on ourself and on our life in our current situation, in our current state, our current faith you know lamentations 3 verse 40 gets, shows us the need for self-reflection we read let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the lord now, this time what we are going through this present distress this present situation this time of uncertainty the problems that persist as a as a result should cause you to stop and to start looking introspectively, start looking at yourself and start thinking and examining my ways, your ways. Am I living the way that I should? My ways, God's ways, and if not, then I need to turn back to the Lord. I want to ask you, where has your treasure been? The question we should be asking is, where has my treasure been? You know, Jesus, Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, 19, 19 through 21, Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, 
where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This time might be able to make this apparent of where your treasure has been. Has your treasure has been everything that you've been focusing on in, in trying to get in this life? Is it of a temporal nature? Because if it is, then this time has probably hindered that pursuit in some way, some shape, some manner, some form. Where has my treasure been? If it's not where it should be in heaven, then it's where moth and rust are going to destroy. It's where thieves are going to break in and steal. We need to reflect and look at our lives and see during this time period, especially while, once again, we have the time to reflect. Think, what is it that I've been after? What about your hope? Where has your hope been? And during this time, it can come out as well, just like it can in where your treasure has been, is where has your hope, where is your hope? We see in 1 Timothy 1 that Paul says, Paul, an apostle, this is as he's starting out this letter to to Timothy, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. That is where our hope is. Jesus is our hope. The question that I want to ask you that we should all be asking ourselves is where has our hope been? Has it been there? Or has it been founded on something else? You know, the thing about the hope of Jesus is that what we read in, in Romans 5, 5, is that hope will not disappoint. And that hope isn't going to disappoint because Jesus was with God in the beginning, he came and lived among us, was perfect, became the perfect sacrifice, not for his friends, but for those who were his enemies. Because of that, there is hope that is not going to disappoint, and that hope that does not disappoint is an anchor for the soul, as we read about in Hebrews 6, 19. Hope is an anchor, and that anchor is going to hold us grounded. If your hope has been in something else, or if your hope is in something other than Jesus, other than the fact that through him there is a hope of eternal life. And that hope isn't just a, a, a maybe. That is a, sure poss- uh, that, that is a sure thing that is going to come true. There is hope in Jesus. Not a, well, maybe there's hope. No, there is hope in Jesus. There is hope in that life eternal with him. But if your hope hasn't been there, it's been somewhere else, then that hope surely is disappointed throughout this time. Surely that hope is not anchored, not solid, and you see it because during this time, life as we know it has been altered and changed. So we need to stop and we need to reflect. Use this opportunity to do so. Again, I want to reiterate and I want to say once again, we'll read there in Lamentations 3, 40. Let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Examine your way. See where your treasure been, where your hope has been. Are you living accordingly to the word of God, as Harry talked about this morning? Are you doing that? Or are you living in your own thoughts, in your own ways? Something that we definitely can use this time to do is to reflect on that. As there are certainly opportunities. Again, this lesson isn't to go down the path of these opportunities have never been here, but now they're all of a sudden here during this time of present distress. But instead, what I wanted us to do this morning is look back at the things that we've taken for granted, all those opportunities that God has always given us. And if, Lord willing, we're able to once again meet and see brethren and be around others, that we don't take, advantage, that, that, that we don't take those opportunities for granted. But as we get into this second part, We see these opportunities in the midst of the problems and uncertainty that's about us. There are uncertainties. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but the reality of it is we've never known what tomorrow's going to bring. That's what we get whenever we read various scriptures. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, and there are certainly their problems and the different things that come up as a result of this COVID-19 virus. But the ability to be able to see through those and understand that the Lord can use everything to work for his good in some way, shape, or form, and that there are still opportunities present for not only you to draw near to him, but there are opportunities present to bring others near to him as well by being a light through this time. I hope that, that, that this lesson has been edifying, has been encouraging, and that, that you can see the opportunities that still might be present in your life. As Harry said this morning, if you have any questions on what was talked about, preached either in his lesson, mine, 
anything Ronnie said, please reach out to us. We want to have a Bible study with you. The members of this congregation want to sit down and have an open Bible study with you because it's not about us and our will and our thoughts. What we want to turn to is the Word of God and open it up and see what is the the Lord's will. What are His ways? How does He want us to walk in this life? I hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Thank you for joining us this morning.